Hey, what's going on everybody? We are out here at Magnolia Cemetery in Leakesville, Mississippi. We're here to visit the grave of a, a legend of comedy, I guess you could say. He was, uh, I heard Ron White say, there are people that build bridges in comedy and then there's people that cross those bridges. And I feel like Bill may have built, he was a bridge builder. That's the way, it's the way I see him. Some people may have a different thought, but to me, it's what we're going to go with. So if this is your first time here, welcome. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, doing all those things. And if this isn't your first time here, hey, welcome back. I hope you enjoy the video. It's a very foggy, overcast, nasty looking day. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about Mr. Hicks and his life. We're gonna celebrate his life. We'll go find his grave at the end of the video. We'll pay our respects and do all that stuff. And this cemetery in itself is very unique. It is like what you see, it is about that wide. Like just, just one, two, three, four, like five, six rows wide. And it is really long. I'm talking a couple football fields. Oh, that's, it's different. It's not it's the first one like this I've been to. It's like they just had enough room for this. That was it. So yeah, let's uh, get, to, oh, don't let me forget. Like I said, I always have to prostitute myself. We've got the merch, we've got the, the member stuff, all that helps. It helps me get to places and do the things that you and I get to do. So I always have to throw that out. So yeah, let's try not to fall. It's a little slick out here today. I hope I don't fall. If I do, I'll leave it in the video. Maybe it'll go viral. You never know. So we'll talk about him. We'll find his grave. It's somewhere that away. And uh, yeah, so let's get to going. Oh, okay, so before we get to, to describing and talking about Mr. Hicks' life, put in there what do you think his favorite, what, what your favorite bit was that he did. Um, like, did you get to see him live? I never got to see him live. Or anything like that pertaining to him. Or at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about the Dennis Leary stuff. And if you know what that is, you can put that down in the comments too. Okay, so back to the video. So, Hicks was born in Valdosta, Georgia. The family lived in Alabama, Florida, and even Jersey before they ended up settling in Houston, Texas. When Hicks was seven years old, that's when they finally, they finally said enough's enough. He was drawn to comedy at an early age. He liked to em emulate Woody Allen, Richard Pryor, and he would write routines with his friend Dwight. While he attended Stratford High School, he began performing comedy, mostly uh, like variations of like Woody Allen material. You know, that, oh gosh, boy, that stuff. Whew. For his classmates. At home, he would write his own one-liners and slide them under the bedroom door of his older brother, Steve, who he thought was a genius, because it's older brother stuff, right? Steve told him, keep it up, you're really good at this. Early on, Hicks began to mock his family Southern Baptist religious beliefs. He joked in the Houston Post in 87, we were yuppie Baptist. We worried about things like, if you scratch your neighbor's Subaru, should you leave a note? However, he was close with his family his whole life and he did not reject spiritual ideology itself and thought his life and throughout his life he he sought various alternative methods of you know experiencing it kevin you remember his friend introduced him to uh, transcendental meditation and other forms of spirit spirituality where this place is it's just i don't know strange i always feel like somebody's coming in here but nobody i don't know anyway Worried about his rebellious behavior, his parents took him to psychoanalysis at age 17. According to Hicks, the analysts took him to the side after the first group session and told him, hey, listen, you can continue coming if you want, but it's them, not you. Like always the comic, right? Got to find the punch in it. I love it. So Hicks was associated with the uh, Texas Outlaw Comics group developed at the comedy workshop in Houston in the 80s. His career received a boost in 87 
when he appeared on Rodney Dangerfield's Young Comedy, Young Comedian Special. The same year he moved to New York, and for the next five years, he performed about 300 times a year. Got to hone that craft, right? On the album Relentless, he jokes that he quit smoking, he quit using drugs, because once you've taken, once you've been taken aboard a UFO, it's kind of hard to top that. Although in his performances, he continued to praise the virtues of LSD, marijuana, psychedelic mushrooms, and other, you know, hallucinogenic items. In 1990, Hicks released his first album, Dangerous, performed on the HBO special One Night Stand and performed at Montreal's Just for Laughs Festival. He was also part of a group of American stand-up comedians performing in London's West End in November. Hicks was a huge hit in the UK and Ireland and continued touring there throughout 91. That year he returned to Just for Laughs and filmed his second video, Relentless. This is where it, uh, it kind of gets neat, I think. I don't know, I'm a big fan of comedy and I'm a big fan of music, like I love music. So progressive metal band Tool invited Hicks to open a number of concerts in 93 at Lollapalooza, their Lollapalooza appearances where Hicks once asked the audience to look for a contact lens he lost. Thousands of people complied. Could you imagine being up on stage and you just come out with that and people just start looking? You gotta love it. So on October 1st of 93, Hicks was scheduled to appear on The Late Show with David Letterman on CBS, where Letterman had recently moved. It was his 12th appearance on Letterman Late Night Show, but his entire performance was removed from the broadcast. At that point, the only occasion where a comedian's entire routine was cut after taping. Letterman finally aired the censored routine in its entirety on January 30th, 2009. Bill's mother, Mary, was present in the studio and appeared on camera as a guest. Hicks often discussed popular conspiracy theories in his performances, most notably the assassination, the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. He mocked the Warren Report and the official version of Lee Harvey Oswald as the lone nut assassin. He also questioned the, the guilt of David Koresh and the Branch Davidian compound during the Waco siege. Hicks would end some of his shows, especially those being recorded in front of larger audiences as albums with a mock assassination of his cell phone stage, making gunshot sound effects into the microphone while falling to the ground. Gotta love that. So on June 16th, 1993, Hicks was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer that had spread to his liver. After being diagnosed with cancer, Hicks would often joke that any given performance could be his last. The public, however, was unaware of his condition and only a few close friends and family members knew of the disease. He performed his final show of his career at Caroline's in New York, January 6, 1994. He moved back to his parents' house in Little Rock shortly thereafter. Bill passed away on February 26th, 1994, in Little Rock at the age of 32. I've got my phone out right here. In early 95, his family released a brief essay that Hicks had written before his death. What we're gonna do is we'll go, we'll go look at this first and then we'll read the essay, okay? Beloved son, uncle, brother, friend. Somebody's put, uh, let's do that. WMM, Bill Hicks, December, February. Somebody's put an Almond Brothers sticker on there. Which, if there is a place after this, hopefully him and Greg are hanging out. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? So he's right, right there. From there to there. So this is what Bill had to write about himself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move that right there like that, and we'll put it back. 
and we're going to keep that right there. I was born William Melvin Hicks on December 16th, 1961 in Valdosta, Georgia. Ugh. Melvin Hicks from Georgia. Yee-haw. I already had gotten off to life on the wrong foot. I was always awake, I guess you could say. Some part of me clamoring for new insights and new ways to make the world a better place. All of this came out years down the line in my multitude of creative interests that are the tools I now bring to the party. Writing, acting, music, comedy, a deep life of love and literature and books. Thank God for all the artists who've helped me. I'd read these words and off I went, dreaming my own imaginative dreams. Exercising them at will, eventually to form bands, comedy, more bands, movies, anything creative. This is the coin of the realm I use in my words, vision. On June 16th, 1993, I was diagnosed with having liver cancer that spread from the pancreas. One of life's weirdest and worst jokes imaginable. I've been making such progress recently in my attitude, my career, and realizing my dreams that I, that it just stood me on my head for a while. Why me? I would cry out, and why now? Well, I know there may never be any answers to those particular questions, but maybe in telling a little about myself, we can find some other answers to others' questions. That might help our way down our particular paths toward realizing my dream of new hope and new happiness. Amen. I left in love and laughter and in truth. And wherever truth, love, and laughter abide, I'm there in spirit. <sighs> Got a little heavy there, didn't it? Yeah. Sucks. Like, I often just imagine, like, what? What could he have been? You know, like, where would he be on the comedy scale nowadays? And the other thing I didn't even talk about, because a lot of people just, most people, will watch to, you know, we'll show the grave, and that's when they check out, right? You can you can kind of see, like, they watch the intro, they'll scrub over, there's the grave, all right, I'm out. So now that we're here and those people are gone, the other thing that I noticed or read when I was doing research on this was Dennis Leary, right? Him and Dennis were good friends. And then it was just like one day, I mean, I don't want to say he did it, but a lot of the material is the same. Like Dennis, like that's why Bill originally said he quit smoking, was to see if Dennis would quit smoking. It was that kind of a, or that's what Bill thought anyway. Like whether Dennis did it or not, that's for him to know, right? That's his conscience. But this, if you go back and look at those old videos, Man, it sucks. Like, I really liked Dennis a lot growing up. And it's just a bummer that, like, I don't know. You put these guys on a pedestal, right? Or I do, because I love comedy. So you would think, like, gosh, man, they're just kind of in that same realm of each other. Like, they're kind of like the same person almost. They, they think alike. Like, you've met people that think a lot alike. You know, like, you and them share the same kind of thoughts and ideas. But, man, some of that stuff, when they play it back, it's hard to deny that I don't think it was just thought. It just sucks. Because I really like Leary. And I like Hicks, too. So, there's that. That's just my opinion on the matter. I don't know if he did or not. But, like I said, if he did, that's for his conscience to have to carry. It just sucks when, like, these comedians turn out to be people which sucks because they're, they're crazy anyway. They're comics. They're, there's something wrong with them to begin with to do what they do, or most of them anyway. So, yeah, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to try to do some more comic graves this year. Um, comedy is very integral to my life. Let you in a little, little bit of secret time, right? Comedy, I love laughing. Laughter is like the soul's medicine, isn't it? Like, and there's nothing better than that. Like a good laugh, man, it can help ease a lot of pain, a lot of trouble, make you feel really good for at least a little bit. And it's kind of like what helped motivate me 
getting to do what I do. I've always loved videoing and stuff like that. And so to me, when like the way comedy makes me feel, I hope I can do that through my videos, even if they're not good, as long as you watch it and while you're watching it, it makes you forget about that mortgage payment or that car note or that ex that just won't quit texting you or, you know, whatever it may be, or your family's falling apart or you've had a disagreement with your wife or your kids suck. One of those, right? Like if that, this little 10 to 20 minute video does that, then I feel like I've done my job. Like that's really like, I, I enjoy that we get to go visit these people, but to me, helping somebody else to forget how crappy life is, that makes it worthwhile. And as long as, truth be told, as long as I can break even where you and I can go do this and I'm not losing money, I'll do this till the day I die. Like, that's what makes it so worthwhile. Like, I don't want to ever, I don't want to say I don't want to get rich because that, that sounds dumb, but it's like, I just want us to be able to go do these things together where I can take you guys to places because some of you guys don't live here. I mean, I'm in the bottom of Mississippi and some people have never been to Mississippi. They don't even live in the U S or and all that. So it's like, if I can bring, like if we can come together and do this and I can make you forget about what's going on in life for just a little bit, I've did what I feel like I needed to do. So thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Like the comments, the, all the stuff, man, it helps. It really does. Life gets tough sometimes. And so it helps me get through. I really do appreciate it. I just want to say thanks. And we're getting close to summer now. We're in March and I don't know, maybe we can go on a road trip or do something like that this year. We can go, I don't know, do something different. I don't know. So we'll have to see. Sorry, I get a little long winded sometimes, but I'm just trying to keep it real with you. Let you know where I'm at in the world. I don't really do that a lot. I'm a, I'm a very quiet individual. I don't really, I don't probably post as much as I should or like use social media like I should to like make the channel grow or like, I don't know. I just, uh, all that just seems, ugh, you know, like all I want, all I like to do, I like to film these videos and put them up for y'all to watch. So that's it. That's my little, there you go. I guess that's almost like a uh, state of the channel address at the end of this video. Thanks to Mr. Hicks. He's the one that motivated me to do that. Yeah, great comic. So yeah, with all that being said, man, thanks again. I really do appreciate it. Times are, times are weird. And it just seems like, I don't know, things, things just keep getting stranger by the day. So yeah, thanks for watching. And you know what? I don't really want to end you guys on a down note. Like there ain't nothing wrong. I just, things are just weird, man. It's weird. And you know what? This is the weirdest, not the weirdest, but it is the strangest. Like we just, uh, well, I needed the walk anyway, but you never know what you're going to find on the back roads. I'll see you guys next time.